You know, this is one of the most beautiful spots in Fort Wayne, kind of a hidden gem. Architecture is so important to any location, especially here in Fort Wayne. Absolutely. I mean, Fort Wayne has so much architecture that people don't even really, really recognize, um, but it's a part of us all the time and it's very important to our city. Wow, I just got done walking around. This really is probably one of the best kept secrets that I know of in Allen County. It's got 191 acres and it is absolutely drop dead beautiful. I got an idea. We've never done this before for the audience. We're going to go ahead and do a flyover, like with our drone, of this property. Do we still have a drone? Last time I checked, uh, money <laughs> kind of in the pond. I think we hired somebody new after he okay, did that. Good. So we're going to do a little flyover. We're going to describe this place and see if you guys can guess where we're at today. Well, the first clue that you're going to have is there is two different ways to come into this location. One of them is off of Clinton. And when you turn in, there's a nice, beautiful sign, and it's... 191 acres but when you first pull in it is beautifully manicured the trees the grass everything is just extremely well taken care of in here yeah and don't miss the nine acre beautifully oh, manicured yeah. lake oh, it's great it's it is gorgeous too <laughs> Another thing you'll notice at the beginning is a beautiful statue, nicely done and there's something very unique about its hands and I'll give you a hint the statue is also holding a Bible. How big is that statue? It is 12 feet tall. Oh, so we can't miss it. No. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's a good hint. Yeah. The architecture is gorgeous in here. It's modern art architecture designed by Aaron Saarinen. Oh. And it's set up like a village, similar to a Scandinavian village. And it really does feel like that when you drive in. Well, one of my favorite features is the chapel. It's an A-frame chapel, absolutely gorgeous. It has some of the best acoustics of any chapel in Fort Wayne. And I used to sing here sometimes in grade school and high school. Which I remember that. And we... that's just right behind your, over your shoulder. And it yes. overlooks that nine acre beautiful lake. Yes, it does. You know, I feel like we're out in the country. And one of the yeah. exciting things here is there's a track. There's also Ooh. several soccer fields and there's a gymnasium here as well. And this gymnasium is used sometimes by the Fort Wayne Mad Ants oh. and some of their practices. Yeah, I'd like to be the water boy one day. <laughs> so there's a lot of things out here. I think one thing that you have to see when you come out here, they have a 60,000 square foot library mm. that's open to the public. You can come out study and you get again, chance to overlook this drop dead beautiful lake. Okay, we've been teasing them enough. Okay. Tell them where we're at. Okay, so where are we? We are at Concordia. Theological Seminary on North Clinton Street. And this has a really big significance. Where we're standing here mm -hmm. is special to me. Well, I know the story about that because this is where my dad and mom got engaged. So dad oh. proposed to mom. Oh. Sometimes he likes to say it was the other way around, but no, he definitely got on one knee for mom. <laughs> uh, right over here. No, 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 that is a little different. <laughs> 45 years ago at this exact spot, I proposed to her and all I can say is this, there was a lot of crying, weeping <laughs> oh, and yes. begging that went on and it took me about three hours before she accepted just oh. so you know. <laughs> that might have happened, no. It's really awesome. I'm so excited that this is the place where uh, we can still visit and, and see that. But I remember you saying that um, there's a really cool engraving on your ring for me, right? So what, what does it say? I don't Here, remember. Can let you? me, I'll get it, I'll yeah. get this off for you. Okay. Oh man, I must have uh, pulling up over the years. Let's it's, see. Okay, here's. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh that's oh deep. It's not oh, floating. No. Oh, that's guys scuba gear. I Come told on. you to wear it around your neck. I'm oh. not telling you. Know oh. what? We're going to start the opening. Um, I think oh. I'm going to do some waiting here real quick. You guys get ready to start oh, the opening of the you show. You are in so much trouble. I really am. <laughs> Hold on. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back. We're over here at the Concordia Theological Seminary. Um, as you guys noticed, I still haven't found my ring, so we're gonna try to work on that after the show. But Lonnie, I think we need to describe a little better about where the Concordia Theological Seminary is in Anon County. Okay, yeah. We're basically at the northeast corner of Washington Center Road and North Clinton. 
Um, basically, it's, the entrance is off North Clinton, the main entrance. Yeah, and there's 191 acres. It goes all the way over to a trail center and also St. Joe R River. River. Right. So it's a really, really beautiful spot. We got the townhomes right over here, and it borders that area. So it's a very, very scenic and pretty place. And I think you know a little bit about the word Concordia. Well, as we said, the word Concordia means harmony and maybe peace. And it was a very popular word in the 1900s. And little, actually before that, it was, also, it was used as a word to describe where Lutherans settled. And then it went on to be used um, to describe boats or name boats and ships. Um, people's names were they I used think Concordia. Three hundred ninety-five yeah. Concordia names in the United States. Oh, you would know that. Yeah, <laughs> first names and last names, and then organizations and of course seminaries. Uh, very popular name, and for good reasons: peace, harmony. Doesn't get any better than that. This is a Lutheran seminary, and so Martin Luther is a pivotal figure. And Martin Luther is famous for being a Catholic monk who had uh, an issue with the Catholic Church. Um, and he decided that uh, he did not believe that deeds were the way to salvation, that salvation came through faith in Christ alone. So like he's a guy that put the 95 Theses on yes, the long, doors, yeah. right? Yeah, so late, t late 1500s. Wow. And so he was a very pivotal um, part of the Lutheran heritage, of course. So let me tell you how we got here today. Uh, the for this seminary started out in 1846 in downtown Fort Wayne, but even longer before that, this was a Native American reservation. So in the 1900s, the Kramer family purchased this land, and then moving forward into history, we saw that the, the actual seminary was built here in the 1950s. So from that point, we had seen this seminary bounce around from Missouri to Illinois and then back here, and this seminary now is a beautiful campus, beautiful location, and has been an important part of Fort Wayne. And the architecture here is beautiful. This was designed by Aero Saarinen, and he was a famous architect, probably most famous for the St. Louis Arch, oh, the hmm. gateway to the west. So he was the architect here. He did a wonderful job. This has kind of a Scandinavian feel, so the way things are designed and grouped has more of a village feel as you drive through the campus. And one of my favorite parts about this is uh, I grew up playing soccer here, and it pretty much was unchanged for all the years I came, but we came back a few weeks ago and I noticed something looked a little different. They actually just got done expanding the library. It went from 15,000 square feet to 60,000 square feet. <laughs> wow. So it is now the world's largest theological library. Wow. And they did a phenomenal job of making it look like it's been here since when Saren and, you know, designed this whole mm -hmm. thing. So uh, is it public? Can anybody come here? Yeah, anybody can come here. <laughs> and uh, they, they have a Ross Rare book room that has some incredible books that are pivotal to not only the Lutheran history, but history in general. Wow. Thanks. Not only are there a lot of great books to go check out of this library, but the the artwork, mm -hmm. the prints, the mosaics that they have in these buildings. There's two mosaics through here that you just have to go in and take a look at. Now, as I had mentioned before, one of my favorite features is the chapel. So the chapel is an A-frame structure, and we're going to get into a little bit more um, about what is so special about it, but there are some really amazing stats about the altar and the baptismal font and the organ. I mean, there's a lot to see and talk about, and I'm excited to be able to go inside and show you. And Kayla, when they were designing this, I heard that Aero Saarinen put this campus together in every dimension humanly possible that was symmetrical. They also formed the chapel onto the right location, the east and west. So I think a lot of architectural history, people have to come out, enjoy it. We're going to get into a little bit further detail, a lot of these areas. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Stay tuned. You seriously are not going to want to miss this. It's a lot of great fun to see what's going on out here. We should sing. We should sing today. We should see if we can get a little okay. sing in the chapel. I'm, okay. Well, we mentioned that the word Concordia means harmony and peace. Maybe also unity comes to mind. And when you come out here, this really is a peaceful place. Oh, it's beautiful out here. And one of the other unique places or, or things at Concordia is the brickwork. There's some really unusual bricks, like this one behind us. You know, the beautiful thing about this whole campus, how everything is just in scale with each other. And when we look at this brick behind us, you see the Concordia brick laid out in a perfect diamond pattern horizontally all yeah. across the student center, all across where they are taking their classes. And it's really helping promote that harmony among the students and the community and everything that's going on here. When you go to school, you got to work together. You do. It's a very good principle. That's what they told me. Love that. And then also, if you go over here, there's another style of brick. There, actually, it's the same style of brick. Okay. It's another Concordia brick, but instead of being laid out horizontally, it's laid out vertically, okay. so it points to God. It points to the heavens when they're doing everything. It brings God and its people all together, once again, promoting that harmony. And that's a great thing to point to.
One of the exciting things about the Concordia Theological Seminary is the Kramer Library. This is one of the most pristine libraries in the country when it comes to theological studies. Yeah, and they just got done with an expansion on this library. Originally, it was only 15,000 square feet, and now they've added 45,000 square feet, making a total of 60,000, which makes it the largest theological uh, library in the world. Now, this library has lots of knowledge like every library but does, but this architecturally is a very unique library. It has over 200 linear feet of glass going out over this nine acre pond. Yeah, and uh, this is one of the, I guess, the largest renovations that they've done on the seminary. And they had a big challenge of trying to make it look like it's always been here. Yeah. Like it was here from the day Saren and laid it out. Uh, they had to reach back out to original manufacturers. They had to make the Concordia brick. Right. Uh, they had to make the tile. They had to, even the main furniture, they had to go back to all these companies and say, hey, can you replicate this? And it took some time to do that. And the interesting thing about this library on top of all those facts is it's sunken into the ground. So when you're standing in the basement level, you are eye level with the water. So you're literally looking out over this pond at the same height. It's really beautiful to come down and take a look at. Yeah, there's so many gorgeous views. Like you said, that's kind of the lower level that you can kind of see out to the pond. But then they have an outdoor deck area on top of that. And then on the top floor, they have all this natural light for a great studying space where there's just table set up where you can grab any of those books, grab your computer and set up there and you know do what it is you're doing there. So part of the challenge of this library expansion was making sure that all the architecture tied in together, that it still went with Soren's plan and idea, including the furniture, because Soren, this architect who did the St. Louis Arch and everything else, he was meticulous, very similar to Frank mm -hmm. Lloyd Wright, yes. when it came to designing all aspects of the home, including the furniture, and he was the one who designed the tulip chair, mm -hmm. and there's a very beautiful example of one of those in here. Yeah. The other thing that I do like about this library, like all the buildings on this campus, is all of them have an internal corridor, which yes. kind of act as the spine of the building. And they're all about, this one's a very large spine, and as you're walking in, you see this mosaic. Oh, This gorgeous. mosaic of the, it's, they call it the King of Glory, and it just draws your attention upwards, and uh, it just is a great entrance as you're walking into the library. Thousands and thousands of pieces mm -hmm. put together into this mosaic, so I really think what we're saying is, on top of everything else that Concordia Theological Seminary has to offer to come visit, the library is probably one of the tops on the list. Well, we're standing in one of the most phenomenal buildings. I would say it's an architectural statement mm -hmm. right here on the campus, and it's called the Kramer Chapel. And it's called the Kramer Chapel because Charles Kramer donated the land where the seminary is today. And they built it, I think, in 1955, started building it in 1955. Uh, it has a capacity of about 750, and it's A-frame in shape. And I remember my mother and father-in-law having an A-frame cottage up on Lake George. This is kind of unique, and I don't believe I've ever been in an A-frame church or chapel before, but it's great. It's beautiful. A lot of fun details here, too. As you look to the back, there are 167 tri or, or the Concordia bricks that are here lined up horizontally or vertically. Um, and it's a really beautiful, awe-inspiring awe view here. 167 here, but there's 168 triangles on the outside at the peak. Wow. Well, yeah. there you go. You <laughs> learn something new every day. Of course. In 1997, they did another expansion here where they uh, doubled the size of the choir loft. And when they did that, they brought in the baptismal font as well. It is one piece of Indiana limestone, and it weighs over 3,000 pounds. Wow. You know, I love the acoustics in here too. I think that I remember singing here growing up and we should try it out later, guys. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun, that'd be fun. The details here too, again, the architecture was all encompassing, all working together, and it even came down to the details of how this organ was put together. Mm -hmm. This organ uh, was also, uh, Saarinen had a part in designing it. There are 2,909 pipes. I can't even imagine. <laughs> and some of them are up to 50 foot tall. So that is absolutely amazing and beautiful, I can imagine. One of the other things that's kind of interesting, you know, we build homes and we're very focused and interested today in lighting. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting building. You see very few lighting fixtures, but it's lit very well. From natural lighting, which takes care of the platform area, to some indirect lighting and some up lighting over on the sides. You don't see bulbs, but mm -hmm. you certainly get light. Yeah. So it's kind of cool from a lighting perspective. Absolutely. You know, now, going back to the organ, Lenny, do you think we could hear that? I mean, 
That'd I'd be like cool. to. That'd be, wouldn't it be amazing? I will never pass on hearing that. Chapel reaches a height of 97 feet, but it's not the big man on campus here. There's actually one tall one thing taller here, and that's the bell tower behind us that comes in in 103 feet tall. Uh, the bell is a pretty heavy bell that we see behind us here too. It is 1,320 pounds. It comes in at 39 inches, 33 inches, uh, and it's just the Finnish architecture is on display here again in this bell tower. Now, Izzy, that's not the only bell tower here. There's another bell tower on the east side of the chapel, and that is the Springfield Bell Tower. Now, that was originally at the Springfield campus, and it was built in 1882. When it moved to Fort Wayne, that was brought here, and it was stored. They did bring it out of storage, and it was placed here. Now, they did rebuild it because it was so heavy, so okay. they rebuilt it in some new housing. And in 1994, that was placed here. The exciting thing about that is every graduating class gets to go ring that bell when they're finished. The original bell tower is rang for chapel services and it comes in at a G sharp. Interesting little note mm, there. Yeah. Well, we are still here at Concordia Theological Seminary and we are standing in front of the cafeteria. You might not think it would be much to talk about, but there's a lot that we can get into. It's a great modern design and this is actually called the Catherine Luther Cafeteria. So it was named after Martin Luther's wife who did have six kids. So it was quite an honor to be named after her because she was such a good provider when it came to food for them. So yeah. they named it after her. It's a great setup. This is a mezzanine style, so it's a big open area. It seats about 300 people. They use this to serve the students, the faculty, uh, visitors, mm -hmm. so anyone can really come in and eat here. But like I said, it's a mezzanine style, and right now we're really into that at Granite Ridge, the mezzanine or the modern style. The modern style is absolutely amazing, and I cannot be more excited about our newest modern house in Tellymore Run out in Leo. It is now open, and you guys are going to die when you come see this because it is just so exciting. It is something we haven't done in a really long time, and we put out all the stops and everything possible, and I, I just, there's so much to say why don't we start there is and you know when I'm here at Concordia I kind of get that feel mm -hmm. and we played off of it in Tullymore yeah. and you really nailed every aspect of that house so from the exterior architecture what I love is it really blends with the surroundings mm -hmm. so when you drive in it has a great feel to it with the landscaping the exterior of the home and then you walk in and really el every element when it comes to lighting to mm -hmm. the wall treatments and the ceiling treatments is modern absolutely you know we definitely tried to play around with with, um, I mean, pulling inspiration mm -hmm. from somewhere like this, the cafeteria has some amazing mosaic art piece in there. And that reminds me of what we did at Tellymore Run for the fireplace. Mm -hmm. We have this absolutely gorgeous porcelain slab, 10 foot tall, 10 foot wide, even returns a little bit more with a beautiful linear fireplace. It is stunning when you go in there. And a lot of the features for this home um, in the modern style, like we see here all around Concordia, um, is a lot of symmetry. So you're mm -hmm. gonna see that throughout the house in Tellymore as well. Um, another feature that I really think plays in both it, are some of the colors. Mm -hmm. You know, the modern colors are a lot of neutrals, blacks, whites, terracotta colors, even some of that cedar, mm -hmm. um, kind of warm, uh, to really brighten things up. And you see that a, a lot around the campus. And we did that at Tullymore. We have cedar stained uh, ceilings in several areas. We have a great floating hearth in black. Um, again, we just try to play with some of those rich colors to, to really draw you in. Um, you know, a lot of people say that modern style can be cold mm -hmm. and not as inviting. And we wanted to make sure it was warm and comfortable and very homey still. And I love that the modern brings the outdoors in. You really mm -hmm. feel 
uh, a part of the outdoors. And here at Concordia, the library in particular has really big windows yeah. overlooking that nine acre pond. Well, out in Tullymore, we have huge windows. So your whole house is a part of the landscape. It's really a great feel. We have two covered verandas. And then of course out there, we overlook some water as well. Absolutely, because I love the outdoor living spaces here. This would be a place I could just come and sit and read. And that's how I feel like when I'm at Tullymore with that pond that you mentioned, we have two covered verandas, a beautiful patio, and I love the entryway going up to the front. We have a water feature, which is what we're standing right next to as well. So I'm telling you, the similarities between both are to die for. So come out to Concordia, then come out to Tullymore Run. We'd love to see you. It is open now. Please come out and see. Yeah, here's a crimson maple leaf. See how dark that is? Yeah. And they got a lot of ivy here too. Well, you know, Matt, as a, as a master uh, landscape architect that you are, I'm sure that when you come around a place like this, you're gonna see different things that I might. Uh, what kind of things are you seeing here? Because I know Saranen was really particular about the architecture all the way down to the landscaping. So what are some of the things that you're seeing? Did you know that some of the dirt from the pond we're actually standing on right now? Oh, okay. And when the pond gets too full, uh, it spills into the St. Joe River. And actually in reverse, if the pond's too low, they have pumps that actually pump water back into the pond to fill it up. Um, and this really is absolutely a beautiful place. And so you can see that the, an architect was involved here. Um, you were telling me a little bit earlier that there was someone else that you knew about that you've seen their work elsewhere. Yeah, I was out in Colorado Springs a couple years ago at the Air Force Academy and the landscape architect there, Dan Kiley, actually was a landscape architect here. Okay. So Matt, again, great um, landscaping does have lots of different colors that uh, are meaningful throughout the different seasons here. Tell me a bit about what you've seen out here. Yeah, when they landscape this, they have multiple different types of trees. They have uh, weeping willows and locusts and flowering crab apples, uh, buckeyes. Uh, all different kinds of trees for all the different seasons. And I know that we've had some tragedy out here on this campus as well. You were telling me a story about that. Yeah, in 2001, we had a tornado that came through here and tore down hundreds of trees. Now they've started to replant them, but it was devastating at that time. Well, all I know is that when it comes to my house, I'm gonna be calling you when I start to do my landscape because I've got some, I need some good advice on that. I'm expensive. We're here at another location here at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne. We're standing here in front of the auditorium. Now the auditorium was named after the first, uh, the founder and first president, Wilhelm Seiler. And this is a place for the entire faculty, the um, students here to come for concerts, rehearsals, um, any sort of sermons, seminars. Uh, they also hold their annual symposia series here every year. It seats 450 people, which is a great size and it is able to be rented out at a great price for anybody in the community. So this is a wonderful place to come and spend a little time. I absolutely love every part of the Concordia Theological Seminary campus. So come out and take a look. So Matt, why don't we tell them where we're at today? We're in front of the Wamsguns Gymnasium and it's named after the Wamsguns family. Uh, they produced a couple pastors and uh, they had a son that actually was in the 1920s in the World Series 
had the first unassisted triple play. Unassisted. Tri You'll have to explain to me how that works later on. I'm not good with my baseball lingo. But the other thing we have here is we have the big gymnasium. We have nine soccer fields. We have the World Bible Playscape area behind this, which is actually really cool to go take a look at. You have the River Greenway with trails, and this goes all the way. We've got Shove Park on one side. We've got Canterbury on another side. You see people kayaking up and down the river through here. You can get all the way downtown. You can get to New Haven, and it all starts right here. I bet you can't guess who practices here. Luke Hoffman. <laughs> no, the Mad Ants. Okay, that's right. The interesting thing about this, you come down here on a Saturday. You've got people on the soccer fields. You have people in the gymnasium. This is open to the public. You've got a quarter mile track behind us that you can get onto. There's just a lot of buzz and activity around here. This is really a community center and this is open to the public or you can even rent out the gymnasium really affordably. Yeah, back in the day, we spent a lot of time out here. So just so you know, I just rented it out. Me and you, one on one, let's go. All right. Did you get a chance to go to those dorms? I did. There are 18 rooms in each one, and they're, they're wow. kind of surrounded like a community. It's really nice. It's really, this is amazing. Ooh. Yeah, and this campus, you know, how it's laid out. You know, if you got to come to a place to study and meditate, you'd have no yeah. excuses. You'd be doing it right here. So you can see what Aero Saarinen was trying to accomplish Absolutely. with this whole campus. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the Schuyler Auditorium. It seats 450 people, oh. so it's used by the community, a great place. Also, the Luther Hall. This is a great place for gatherings or receptions, all here on site. Gymnasium was fantastic, and this place is really affordable to rent out to really anybody. Hey guys, I know I keep talking about it, but that library was pretty fascinating. That rare book room, I mean, there was so much rich history there. They let you in? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've been there for a long time, either, no, have you? No, I forgot how much. Fun. You know, I will say this, on a Saturday, all you have to do is come out to this campus, and you are going to see a beehive of activity, especially on the sport fields. Yeah. Lots of soccer teams, yeah. lots of people playing. It's a really big community activity area here. I discovered that as you look through the campus, if any, any of the bricks are painted white, that means that they're facing east and west in direction. Huh. And then if it is a brown wall, that it is facing north or south. That's an interesting oh. one. And Kayla, I think you saw something in the uh, chapel. Absolutely. I mean, that organ is amazing. And I just, I love this space. I always have loved to sing. And so that is my space right there. Okay, I think we need to close. Kayla, would you go ahead and close for us? Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call, visit our website, or even better yet, come in our front doors. We'd love to meet you. Okay, basketball team. Horse? Who's playing? Horse? 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 I don't have the shoes for it today. This was designed by Aero Saarinen, and he's a famous architect. Now, in fact, guess what? He yeah. designed the, um, were you going to say that? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Sorry. So, much so, so, so much enthusiasm out here. I'm excited. Go for it. <laughs> because they tried to make everything just so it would blend in with what was already here. And the architect, sorry, I have a bee flying in my eye right now. He's on the back of my head. I was wondering how long you were going to be able to hold your composure. <laughs> I was doing pretty good there. I really was. Oh. Ah! There's a bee. Okay. Well, Matt, where are we? Uh, we're at the Wamsconce uh, Gymnasium. <laughs> I forgot the word. That sounded really convincing. It was like, okay. I got Watts, guys.